There are so many different types of targeting systems used for the weaponry of today and yesteryear, but I will be focusing mainly on helicopter and tank missiles, namely ATGM and AGM ASM missile types, from the French-German Milan missiles on the Warrior IFEs to the Russian Vichir air-to-ground missile for anti-tank purposes. Saklos, MCLOS, Los BR, SAL-H and ARH and wire guided, but the latter is also included in the MCLOS systems. In 1953, France started development on the SS-11 ATGM missile. The SS-11 was commonly found on the French Alouette and the British Scout helicopters. Being a wire-guided MCLOS missile, it only had a short range of 1.86 miles or 3 kilometers. MCLOS is manual command line of sight, meaning that the person firing this missile used a manual input device like a joystick while viewing the missile through an optical system that allows them to see the missile's path and adjust it accordingly. The SS-11 missiles saw great success with Britain using them in the Falklands War and only having one missile fail out of the 10 that were fired. This was due to the command wire breaking. More modern wire guided missiles come under the SACLOS category, but more on that later. To guide this missile effectively, they are equipped with a magnesium flare at the rear of the missile so that the gunner can see the missile in their optics and move the missile towards its intended target. MCLOS is quite difficult to use and requires significant amounts of training and focus on the gunner's behalf as they need to track the target and the missile themselves. Because of these shortcomings, their accuracy was marginal for a tank-sized target and therefore was replaced by the easier to use and more accurate SACLOS systems. Semi-automatic clear line of sight, SACLOS. Differs from NCLOS because of it being semi-automatic, so the gun only needs to track the target and the missile will work its way to the target based on inputs from either a wire or a radio signal. SACLOS systems will work out the angular difference of direction between the missile and the target. The sighting device will then give inputs to the missile depending on where it is in relation to its target through a wire or via radio signals. There are of course downsides to each being that wire guide munitions have a shorter range and are limited to the length of the wire attached. Environmental factors also need to be considered, like water and dense trees as the wire can short out or get caught. Radio guidance has the range and location advantages, but can be jammed by opposing forces to prevent it from accurately hitting its target. The sighting aiming devices for these weapons will often include lasers, meaning they can be defeated by IR dazzlers like that of the Russian Stora APS system. If you want to learn how that and other APS systems work, then be sure to check out my other video, I'll leave a card above. Saklos is still commonplace in the modern battlefield, being utilized in weapons like the American BGM-71 Toe, French-German Milan and the Russian AT-4 Spigot. Line of sight beam riding, or often referred to as beam riding, can include two different types of target acquisition, which include radar beam riding and laser beam riding. They do kind of explain themselves, but we will go into more depth about both of them. Radar beam riding is one of the simplest forms of missile guidance and was developed in the late years of World War II, mainly by Britain and their Breakmine missile, which used radar beam riding to reach its target. The research that was done on these missiles resulted in the British Sea Slug and Bloodhound missiles. Missiles using this guidance will be equipped with a receiver antenna in the rear of the missile, so the missile knows when it is within the radar beam and is on track to its target. The downfall of radar beam riding is that they get less accurate at long range as radar guidance path is cone shaped, meaning it fans out as it gets further away. Because of these downfalls, pure radar beam riding was quite rare after the 1960s as we had new inventions like semi-active radar homing and active radar homing which were Go into later. Laser beam riding missiles work in a very similar fashion to radar beam riding missiles except that the radar beam is swapped for a laser beam. These systems tend to be more accurate than their radar counterparts as lasers are much much narrower than the radar mentioned above meaning a smaller accuracy loss at longer distances. Russian Vichir is a great example of this system and is mounted on their K-50-52 helicopters and also on their Su-25 Frogfoot ground attack aircraft. The Vichirs have a multi use capability meaning they are able to not only attack ground units but also air units as they have a proximity fuse as well. With both systems especially in helicopter platforms the gunner can lock onto targets which make these systems many times easier to use than the previous and older SACLOS and MCLOS systems which cannot lock to and track a target specified by the gunner. Semi-active laser homing is very similar to Lost BR in the fact that they both use laser painting so that the missiles can seek the reflected laser energy. 
The difference is that Sao H usually requires more power than Lost BR missiles as the laser painting creates a large area on the target, so the body of the missile doesn't block all of the signals. Some American Hellfire missiles that you will see mostly on the AH-64 Apache attack helicopters use this type of guidance. Others like the Hellfire Longbow use radar guidance, different from radar beam riding mentioned earlier. The front of a Hellfire missile has a laser sensor system that detects where a target is being painted by utilising a laser designator, either from infantry personnel or from the launch platform itself. The Hellfire will leave the platform and fly above its target to attack top down so that it can exploit the inherent weakness of top armour. On the subject of Hellfire missiles, did you know that the US developed a non-explosive version called the Hellfire R9X? It carries blades that fold out when nearing the target. Well, they designed this Hellfire to be as clean and precise as possible to create as little collateral damage as possible, and they have already used it to eliminate multiple targets with little to no unwanted casualties. Sal H is different to Lost BR as the missiles do not follow the beam and instead find the target on their own by searching for the laser painted area. This means that Sal H missiles can also be guided by vehicles or personnel on the ground with laser designators, which beam riders cannot. The downfalls to this type of guidance, as there's downfalls for all of them, is that some modern tanks have a special paint that prevents the laser from being reflected back, so the missile cannot find its target as well as it normally could. Infrared homing is probably one of the most famous types of missile guidance and is often referred to as fire and forget. They are used in a wide variety of applications from air to air combat and air to ground strikes. IR munitions rely on the heat from a target to track and bonk it on the head. The benefit of IR over radar guidance is that they provide no indication that they are tracking a target, meaning that they are amazing for sneak attacks on the enemy. This technology is one of the best in my opinion as it was developed way back in World War II and is still one of the most used systems today. There are many different missiles that use this but some of my favourites include the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missile, the SRAM close range air-to-air -air developed by Britain, Stinger SAM from America and the PARS-3 LR air-to-ground missile mounted on the French-German Eurocopter Tiger. You can see all of these in the game War Thunder, but more on that game at the end of the video. Now, with this being such an old and worked on technology, it also means that there are many counters to these methods. For example, an AGM-65 Maverick can be avoided simply by deploying a thermal smoke screen so that the Maverick cannot see its target and won't hit it. If you would like to know how thermal smoke does this, then I will leave a video about that above and below. In the case of air to air missiles, then you all know that flares are invented for this purpose. Although, much newer missiles have counter countermeasures so that they can ignore the flares. Active radar homing is the final category for today's video. These are also referred to as fire and forget. I prefer the infrared fire and forget. These work by utilizing a radar transceiver to find and track their target autonomously. Thus meaning that the launch platform can move away and perform other tasks and even turn off its radar without affecting the missile. As I mentioned earlier, the Hellfire Longbow missiles are fire and forget. Now the same as everything on this list, active radar guided missiles do have their shortcomings. Most radar guided missiles are powered by rocket motors, meaning that they cannot generate their own electricity to power the radar systems within them. So they will carry a battery, which significantly reduces their radar power. Also, having an entire radar system built into a missile means that they are way more expensive than their semi-active missile counterparts. Now, to finish up, I will answer a question I think most of you will have, which is, why not include every type of missile tracking in one video? The reason for this is because there are so many different categories and subcategories of missiles that the video would be so long it would be like a short documentary. The ones featured in this video are also commonly seen in the game War Thunder, so if you play War Thunder and have seen these, this video might help you use these systems more effectively. If you are new to the game, I will leave a code down below for you to get started and to get some free items. Anyway, on that note, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something from today's video. If anyone you know would like to learn how this tech works or is just interested in this, then please share it with them. Check out the Twitch channel for more cool content and maybe hit up that Patreon page to support the growth of this channel. And get your name on the supporters list at the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss another video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.